today I wanted to talk about crisis communication. So a crisis is defined as a major occurrence with a potentially negative outcome affecting the organisations, company or industry, as well as publics, products, services and a good name. So we chose to do a mock PR crisis acting as Michael Jeffrey's PR team. If you don't know about this, he was recently involved in a controversy where he has been accused of sexually assaulting his models as he was the CEO of Abercrombie & Fitch. So the positives that we took from this was that I had effective media response, which helped to successfully navigate the press inquiries while protecting clients' interests. And this really helps to align with the strategic messaging. Obviously, because this is an ongoing investigation, you do have to factor those legal sort of things into it. There is also a bit of an absence of voice, which was definitely a drawback as the client voice does help foster trust and transparency. Um, moving forward, I think we could definitely do clearer role definitions because this would help avoid confusion and have sort of smoother responses. And I think we could really learn from this as there is an emphasis on the importance of continuous learning in real life environments and identifying these strengths and weaknesses really helps to grow our PR branding forward. So... If we're comparing this to a real life example, uh, Kanye West, the owner of Yeezy, has been under controversy in 2022 as he was cancelled over months of anti-Semitic hate speech on Twitter, which is now X. And his really, really popular brand associations, Adidas and Gap, have had to be cancelled, uh, have had to cancel his brand affiliation due to this. They were quite silent about this. And then when they did decide to speak, they spoke really quickly and it tended to lack a lot of authenticity. And I think this kind of seemed inconsistent to their viewers, which decreased their authenticity. They did eventually both take a stand in ending the partnerships and built that communication back up, which did help to build the trust. And I think to learn from this, they could sort of they they need to learn that the proactive planning is really important in crisis development and that authenticity comes first constantly monitoring Kanye's actions online and just really comparing those to the brand values because I think they didn't want to disrupt this huge sales income that they have from Kanye but they also needed to understand how this was reflecting onto their customers as one of their primary stakeholders and how this can be a really big setback in terms of what they stand for, especially that they were so late to make any kind of statement. Their silence, I think, was also sort of seen as solidarity with Kanye West, which is also not what they want as a brand. Um, so thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments about the Kanye West scandal and see you guys soon. Bye.